Oh man, I don't know about you lately, but I have been having a pretty hard time just trying to figure out who is a photographer and who is a Photoshop artist. Is Photoshop killing photography? Or is it just another way to continue that creative expressive freedom? I don't know. If you're not familiar with Boris FX, they actually started helping videographers and filmmakers create these effects in video, which is kind of ironic because, you know, did Photoshop kill photography in the same way that CGI killed practical effects? Maybe. Are we complaining about it? Are we not complaining about it? Is this just the evolution of where the art is going? I can't tell at this point if I really enjoy the creative freedom of being able to work with an image afterwards to such an extent that it alters reality or if that pisses me off. Now, some of the newest features in Boris FX, I think are extremely relevant, especially to wedding and portrait photographers like their new beauty skin smoothing. That's just a staple and something that you'll probably end up doing at some point in your photography career if you photograph humans at all. But the other fun things like the new particle illusions and creating the bokeh you want, a little bit of lens flare, shadows, window shadows, these are all things that are just going to enhance the vision that you may have had but couldn't execute in camera. Let's dive into this new program that has a ton of new ways that we can work with photos that we've already taken. So the first thing I thought to do would be to show you a few quick before and afters. Now these I did not do myself, but I had uh, one of the guys, Ross over at Boris FX, take a look at some of my images and then just have his way with them. So we got some before and afters, just showing off various different things that you can do with this program and honestly you can really run wild you can throw different backgrounds in like this you can you know create these wall shadows like light is coming through and of course we got some nice fireworks and stars and sparklers this one is definitely a lot of fun here we created more of a film look and just changed the color overall because in Boris FX you can completely like edit as well it's not just effects you can at a color tone and exposure and all these things. Um, but this is the particle illusions that you can see like all the little fun dust, um, you know, those flowers when you blow them, dandelions, <laughs> it looks like somebody blew them uh, here. So that's a lot of fun. And then one of the other new features is skin smoothing. So you can see the before and after between these two. I mean, nice and subtle, nice and natural. And they also sharpened up the eye there too. So that's one of the newer features in the new version of Boris FX. And then of course, more particles, adding some snow here. And you know, it's subtle little things too. Like right here, notice that little like light leak lens flare. I'm gonna open this up in Photoshop. It saves all of the different layers. So you can run Boris FX as a separate standalone program like I have here, or you can run it within Photoshop. And the fun thing about running it within Photoshop is it creates these layers here. So if you wanted to, even afterwards, you could decide, okay, I want a half what I just did in Boris FX, um, cause it's adding it as a layer, or we can just double click and it's gonna open up the plugin and open up the photo as well as all the work that we did to it. So I'm just gonna take this one and yes, we'll apply the previous filters and masks. Now, if you have used Boris FX before, you're gonna notice this is a much cleaner feeling layout. They just updated that a little bit. Now, these are all the different layers within the program here, all the effects that we did. And as we kind of like go down, we're just on everything here and below. So this is our original. And then we added, and not we, uh, Ross over at Boris FX added this, and we can see the mask right here too. So. If I click on that, you're gonna see the mask that was just quickly drawn. You can create masks a ton of different ways and I'll probably do that when I actually edit some of these. So we've got that mask. If I wanted to, I can try some of the other filters on here that they already have. Subtle smoothing, smoothing with color correction, or we can go the opposite. We can totally age her or we can intense smooth in. It's a little bit crazier. So four pass, five pass, 
medium smoothing, really just depending on what you want to do. I think that's a pretty powerful feature and something that you would use in general. All right, let's go to the sharpen feature here. Um, this is just nice. I think all of our images need a little bit of sharpening every once in a while. You can see just how far you can go with really what we want to sharpen. But the nice thing is, so aside from this, let's go ahead and we'll hit apply. And let me start with an image from scratch. I just wanted you to see where that beauty one was. Okay, so this picture right here, I added all of these particles. I went and I found stock imagery that had all this bokeh and these little like lens thingies here. And it took me a pretty long time to edit this in Photoshop. I mean, not like hours, but it took a chunk of change. And I'm curious if I take this photo of mine and edit it in Boris FX, if I could potentially level this up a little bit in less amount of time. I'm gonna to go to Boris FX Optics 2022, which is their newer one, and let's play around a little bit. Down here, this is your basic section where you have all the things that you can do. Adjusting, color correcting, curves, developing, enhancing, fluorescent. And then anytime you click on one of these, over here on the left are a bunch of different versions of that base filter. Then we can go click on something else. Uh, Film Lab is really nice. So we have all these different film stocks in here. I mean, look how endless this is. The other fun thing about film stocks here is we have ones that are just mimicking movies like Blade Runner, for example. It's <laughs> just pretty fun. You can all, since this is a lot here, we, I mean, we've got all these like Fuji film, I could stay here forever. I could stay here forever. Okay, but let's go up into all. Watch this. This will filter what's coming below here. We can just go to movie looks. So 500 days of summer, about time. Love that movie. It's mimicking Mad Max, that filter that was on that movie, which I think is pretty cool. That's pretty fun to just be able to do that. Finding Nemo. I feel like that's appropriate for this picture. And any of these you can, you know, save as favorites here by the star. And then it's gonna show up in your favorites over here. What I really want to do with this one, I want to get into the light, first of all. We have plenty of options for all these. Uh, and one of my favorite ones is of course a little bit of lens flare. So there are a ton of different lens flares that we could use and you can move them around. You could even bring it off so it's not showing that where the light actually is. Just a fun little look. And then on this side, anytime that you select one of these on this side, we can just play with it a little bit. So we've got scaling our widths. We can mess around here. You can click and drag also on the number value. And my whole thing is subtlety. So there raise brightness, so we really can just mess around with this a whole bunch. Now, if you want to, you can mask this. So I don't want to have it potentially on her face. So we can add a mask for that. These are the different types that we can use. I'm probably just gonna use a spot mask. And then I'm just gonna invert it and you can see it came off. So that one looks good to me. Let's play a little bit more and get something else here. So we got some of those fun objects there. Now I wanna get into this particle illusion. This is gonna blow your mind. Let's just get the smoke right about here. Now, the fun part of this is this time bar here. Watch this. It's going to change the smoke over time. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do this right now. However, I can't imagine this not being a fun thing to play with for NFTs. I'm just gonna plant that seed. But what I'm really looking for is a little bit of that bokeh in front. So I think I'm gonna do this sparkly glitter here. And I do like this orange. And let's go ahead and mess around with time to see where we want it. Awesome. So here we have just a little bit of a before and after. It's pretty crazy the difference between both of these 
you know, and just enhancing a little bit, creating something completely new. Let's go ahead and find something else that we can play with. So we did a portrait one. Let's just go ahead and try a wedding one. Let's do this one. I don't know. Maybe we can add a moon. Maybe we can make it look a little bit more like nighttime. I think I'm going to go a little bit crazy here. Let's start off with the diffusion. I want to create a little bit of fog throughout the land here. Seeds and clouds. Yeah, this is more what I'm looking for. Let's play with this. Look how crazy that is, the time feature. That's just, that's just bananas. I want it to be a nice low lying fog, maybe a little bit of those particles there. Let's go ahead and paint in my mask this time. See what we get. So now I've got a little bit of my fog. Now let's play with the sky a little bit. Let's go ahead and use one of my favorite features, the easy mask here. Now this one, you just tell it where you want the mask to be and it's going to auto find it for you. So you're really just going to paint streaks in here and then you can paint where you don't want the mask and then you let it do its job. The more you paint, the more information that you're going to give it to let it know exactly where you want the mask. And then of course you can adjust. So once you kind of paint everything in here, go ahead and let it do its magic to generate the mask. And voila, look at that. We got a really nice mask going here so you can see the stars are only in the sky versus all over the ground. And you can see a little bit about what this mask is right there. And let's go ahead and I just want to lessen a little bit of how crazy these stars are. Maybe we just see a little bit of the stars, not like a ton of them just enough for it to be slightly magical and then on top of this I want to do one more thing and do this day for night just so we make things a little bit more realistic I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this mask bring it up to this one so we can again still really working on the night sky versus everything else I don't want to take all of my purple out of it, just a little bit. Should I not have fog on here? Hmm. Yeah, I do like the way this looks a little bit better. So let's go ahead and look at the before and after with this photo. You know what? I mean, it's not like I hate this, but that's kind of epic, right? Not too shabby for the before and after, just taking a look at what we can do here. Now the last thing I want to show you is how you can change a background. So we're going to go ahead and open this already edited in Boris FX so we can take a look and see what exactly happened. Now once you mask this out, here's our original and you can easily use a mask, the easy mask feature, just like this. You can see we drew all the lines here and by we, I mean Ross again, we drew all the lines here. So we created a nice easy mask and then we just duplicated the mask to the different types of uh, filters and layers that we wanted to. So we started off by giving her a little bit of a glow, then got the light leak going, coming up to using some TV damage, which again, it's just a really, really fun way to stylize the, the photo here and the background. I almost want to like mess around with this a little bit because there are so many fun things that we can do. Do what you'd like with it. All right, then created some ice halos, a little bit more digital damage got a little light flare going and then applied an overall film stock to it to give it its final look but pretty fun between the two just seeing what you can do in just a few clicks well you tell me we certainly have quite a few different before and afters that we've done and taken a look at both what I did pretty easily not being an expert in this so I would have to say the learning curve I'm very happy with the learning curve I have to admit even though I often look at photos and get a little bit annoyed by how much Photoshop there is in there or Boris affecting. I have to admit that it's really fun to play with your images. And let me play devil's advocate, even though I do believe in the true raw art form of photography, I also believe in making money with my photography as a career. So if I take my client's 
favorite image or a couple of favorite images and play around a little bit in Boris FX? Are you going to tell me they're not going to want to print those favorite images now enhanced as large pieces of wall art or at least covering two spreads, three spreads in an album? I'm guessing they would and I'm guessing that's going to make me a little bit more money. It's probably at the very least going to get me a little bit more Instagram engagement for elevating a photograph which in turn will end up giving me more clients. If you want to learn a little bit more about Boris FX, head to bit.ly forward slash Boris Joy and you can see all that this program can do because quite frankly, this video doesn't even scratch the surface. It's like photography on crack. That's what Boris FX is like. And they do a great job giving you a ton of different examples and videos and tutorials so you can really see just how robust this program is. Tell me what you think down in the comments. Is this crossing the line between photography and Photoshop? You are so far past the line. The line, the line is a dot to you. And while you're down there, hopefully leaving me a comment and clicking on the Boris FX link, leave me some love there. Hit like, subscribe, ring the bell, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. I'm like having problems. Are we free? Why can't I speak? I don't remember. This is like my new thing. I play the piano. What I talk about. Blah blah. Two complete ends in the mirror. I can't speak today. That should be good.